Have you ever had a long list of photos that you need to resize and rename, but you don't either want or can't use something like Photoshop or Lightroom to get that done for you, and you have no idea what to do with it? (laughs) You could use something like Tiny JPEG. You could do like 20-ish at a time that way, but they don't rename the files for you. But you can actually do this for free with no extra software if you're using a Mac. Sorry, PC users, I haven't used one regularly in my life for 20 plus years now, and I couldn't for the life of me tell you how to do this on a PC, even if I wanted to. Sorry, not sorry. (laughs) So before I dive into that, who the hell am I? (laughs) If we haven't met before, my name is Caitlin. I run Launch the Damn Thing. I am a Squarespace educator and a web designer. I run my business by myself, and I've had to find a lot of ways to streamline things and become more efficient because I'm a one-mom show over here, and I hope that you can relate to that. I'm sure that's why you're watching. So let's hop on in to my computer, and I'll show you exactly how to do this step by step. So first, you'll want all of your photos in relatively the same finder window in the same space. I tend to organize them by list view. And if I click on the size column, I like to order them by largest to smallest, just so that I have an idea of which ones are the ones that need the most help. So what I do is to select all of the images together and open them in preview, or you can also select the ones that are visually portrait and open them together and then select the ones that are visually landscape together. Either way, doesn't really matter because you can do the same thing in either view. So if I do all the landscape photos first, then I would double click to open them in preview and then go up to tools, adjust size, and you can see the width and height here. If you're using it for a background image, you'll probably want something in the neighborhood of 2000 pixels. If it's a decorative element on the page, then you can safely stick to around 1000 to maybe even 1200 or 1500 pixels wide. So let's pretend that this is going to be in an image block in a section and we don't need it to be a full background. In that case, we could do 1000 pixels wide and you can see the size changes drastically. So let's stick with that. We'll leave these two checked. The resolution is 72 for web, so all of that's good. And then we'll click OK. Now, don't freak out because they're typically going to appear blurry here. So that's how you do one at a time. If you want to do all of them, then select the first image in the list, hit Shift on your keyboard, and then select the last one in the list. We've already done this first one, so I'm not going to include that in the list. After you have the ones that you want to edit selected as a group, go up to tools and do the same thing you just did. Go up to tools, adjust size, and make sure that you put in the same value that you did for the other one, assuming that they should be the same size. So we'll put in 1000 pixels. It's still 72 pixels per inch. These two check boxes are both checked and it's going to tell me the total file size for all three of the selected images, as opposed to the total file size they were before. So it shows you that here, click OK, and now they're all gonna look blurry. So next step is to select all, which is Command A on my keyboard, go up to File, and then Export Selected Images, and click Show Options, and then have make sure it's selected on JPEG. There is no reason that you need to use PNGs on a website unless you need that transparent background for something and these won't need that. So select JPEG, select the location that you want to save these images. Usually I create a new folder just for ease of use and we're going to click choose. It's exporting all three images, all four I believe. So let's double check that. If we open that, yes, all four of the landscape images have been saved. So now you can see this one was 1.8 megabytes. And when we resized it in Finder, it's now 164 kilobytes, which is roughly a tenth (laughs) of the photo size. So they're going to load a lot faster that way. For the portrait images, you want to do the same thing. Just select them open them together, select all, 
either. You can do Command A to select all in the list, or you can click and then hold Shift on your keyboard and click the second one in the list. Tools, adjust size, type in the value that you want. But this time, because these are portrait, remember, we don't need them to be a thousand pixels wide necessarily. We need them to be a thousand pixels high. If we want to resize them, just make sure that you're resizing the tallest or widest um, length of the video of the photo. So for this one, we're going to do 1000 pixels wide at 72 resolution. Both boxes are checked. And now it tells me that both images together are a total of 245 for both images as opposed to 3.1. We're going to click OK. And then we're going to select all again and then go to file export selected images. And we're going to choose that same folder, show options just to make sure that it's on JPEG. And then we're going to choose and then we can go check. Yes, that photo is now 93 kilobytes and this one is 92 kilobytes. So if we go back here and literally you can also, instead of going to file and revert, you can also select the image in question and do command Z on your keyboard and that will undo the resolution change. You can see it got a lot bigger. And if we exit out of that window, then I don't need to save anything because those are the original JPEGs that are unedited in file size. So now we have the originals here and then we have the copied resized images here. A quicker way to do that, you could also select all and duplicate, then right click and then do new folder with selected items. Let it catch up with me. <laughs> Name it something different and then open these double click and let's select all of the landscape photos in the group tools, adjust size. And this time let's do maybe a background size image, 2000 pixels wide. I'll click okay. Then we'll select these two tools, adjust size. And this time we'll do the height. If we want to use a portrait style image first, you ideally need to crop it. But for right now, I'm going to make it 2,500 pixels wide in the hopes that the width will be approximately 2000 so that we can use it um, at the right width. You can see that doesn't really help downsizing the image too much. So we'll have to check that later. If we click OK, it's going to resize those two by themselves. There we go. And if we select all and then click save command S on my keyboard, then that should save all the changes to these files. If you're not sure, you can always click to exit out of it and it'll ask you to save over and over again. Save, 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 save. There we go. So let's take a look at the file size. They're still actually pretty decent. If you're using SEO space on Squarespace, it'll tell you that it wants 250 kilobyte images. That doesn't tend to apply to background images necessarily. So if you can get it down that low, but anything under 500 has been historically fine. So this is the only one in question that really needs to be resized a bit further. So if we open that one by itself and we can see that it's on 2000, but it's still a little bit high. So if we take it down to maybe like 1800, let's see what that does to the picture. Yeah, that took it down from six something to 492. So we're good there. So that's a process of resizing the photos in Finder and Preview without needing Photoshop. It's a great process for clients that are using a Mac. Next, I want to teach you how to rename files in bulk within Finder without needing any other external software. So first, you'll want to select the full list. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this, but you always select the photos in question that you want to add it together and then right click and then click rename. Within this, you will have a few different options. You can replace text. So if you wanted to, for example, remove unsplash or remove copy, for example, if we wanted to remove copy from the file name, then we would click replace text, type the word that we want to remove, and it would actually remove it from the file name. 
You can also replace it with something else. So I could add like dash LTDT, for example. And if I renamed it, you can see that all of those files, it replaced copy with dash LTDT, my business abbreviation. You can also, instead of replacing text, you can add text. So if we back out of that really quickly and then do undo, let's do rename and then we select add text. So this time we're going to do space dash space LTDT. If I wanted to add my business name, I do have a, a quick like keep board command or something for that. So after you type in whatever you want it to say, then you can say add this to the end of the file name or add it to the beginning of the file name. I'm going to choose after file name this time and then click rename. So now it kept the copy because we went back and we undid what we did before. So it was back on and then we did dash and then my business name afterwards. You can also rename and instead of replacing or adding text, you can format the entire file name however you want. Typically you want to start with the name and index. So that's going to basically give all the files the exact same name and then add a number after the end of it, numbering however many files there are in the selection, whether that's 500, 1,000, or two, it doesn't matter. So if we wanted to name this, for example, launch the damn thing, unsplash photos for blog, and then always remember that whatever you end the file name with, it puts the number immediately after that. So for example, if I wanted that file name to end with an underscore, a long underscore and a number, then I just need to make sure that I put that there, a space, dash, whatever it is to separate the last word from the number itself. So I'm gonna do that and then click rename. And now all the files have been renamed with that same kind of format. This is a great way to rename files in bulk for website clients or for design clients in general. I find that I do this pretty often when I am resizing photos in bulk too, so that I can group like gallery images together, portfolio images together, those kinds of things works really, really well. So this is a really easy way to rename files in bulk as opposed to clicking on each one, double click, rename the file, click off of it, go through the whole list. Oh my God, don't do that anymore. Now you know there's a quick way to do this on a Mac with very little effort. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope it saves you loads of time and frustration and maybe even a Photoshop subscription fee because we all secretly hate Adobe, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have for you in this video. If you're a beginner web designer and you want some more tips from someone like me who's been doing this for a while, long enough to become a little bit more efficient, check out these videos for more tips related to the peak inside my client portal and how I get streamlined and efficient feedback from my web design clients. That's all for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.